welcome to Sheboygan County Government, working for you. My name is Adam Payne, County Administrator and co-host of this program with Chairman Tom Wagner. And as you know, every month we strive to bring a different department or some key programs and services to talk about what good is happening in Sheboygan County and some of the very good people involved. And today we are so pleased to have our Transportation Director with us, Mr. Greg Schnell. Welcome. Thank Thanks for having me. Greg, has it been... 10 years or close now? It'll be 10 in October. 10 years in October. 10 productive years. A lot going on in the transportation department. And that's what we're going to focus on is a little high-end overview. You may have read in the paper that there are some key initiatives underway with our transportation department, our system. And let's get right into it. Let's talk a little bit about the miles of roadway, Greg. I think you shared with the county board just last week that we have 450 miles of county roads in Sheboygan County to take care of fifth largest amount of all 72 counties. That's correct. Talk a little bit about the roads and what's involved. Well, there's a, every, every other year um, on odd years, we have to do a, a rating system uh, It's provided to us by the state of Wisconsin called the PASER system. And that's how we determine what that road needs, whether what kind of surface, if it's gonna need a seal coat, an overlay or a pulverize and pave. Um, so, as we stand today, we need about 70 or 272 miles of paving that needs to get done on our county highway system, whether it's an overlay or a pulverized or in pave, that's where those numbers are. The rating system goes from 1 to 10, 1 being the worst, 10 being the highest, and that's how we determine where we're going to go and what needs, to, what needs to work and what type of work. So, we get that question periodically, you know, how do you determine what roads to focus on, how do you establish priorities, and it's this system that that's really used statewide, is it not? That's correct. We have to, every other year, we have to submit that to the state so they know what types of conditions our roads are in. So every municipality throughout the state of Wisconsin has to submit that every year. Every one year. being the worst, 10 being the best? That's correct. So what would be the example of a one or two that's really in rough shape? Um, where you see a lot of the alligator cracking where the there's potholes and, and some of the materials lifted out where there's water standing after a rain in the wheel rutting. Uh, those are things that we're going to start to look at. Um, if their shoulder is real uh, narrow, that's, a, that's an indicator for us as well. We're not supporting the asphalt that's there and a lot of times we start to lose that, the, the integrity of the shoulder of the road and, and because of those issues. And with 272 miles of roads that need resurfacing, that's the number you just used, right? That's correct, 272 yes. miles out of 450. We can't do that all in one year. How do you establish priorities on which ones you're going to address and how much we can do? Well, it's, it's one of those things where when we look at the, the roads, we look at ADTs, the, where, where's the traffic going? What type of uh, involvement is in that road? Are we supporting businesses? Are we supporting large agriculture? Is the road getting worse? Is it staying in that kind of condition? Sometimes we need to invest in our newer roads before we invest in those really bad ones because we need to support what's there and before it goes uh, the other way. So when we're looking at, at doing those types of criteria, we look at drainage. Water is one of our worst enemies. Uh, we'd like to keep that off the surface, out of the ditches, so it runs and gets away from our base, so it doesn't get sucked into the, the base of the road and, and cause uh, soft areas. So we'll look at that. We'll look at safety conditions. And then we'll look at the, the, the average daily traffic, the ADT. And if we're supporting that business that has a lot of trucking traffic, um, and just to get their employees in and out uh, in a safe manner, um, that's how we'll, we'll establish some of that criteria. I imagine most of our viewers have been reading in the newspaper about the needs for maintaining our transportation system, not only in the city of Sheboygan, Sheboygan County, but statewide. If we have 450 miles of roads, that means we need to service on average about 30 miles a year to keep up. How much does it cost to resurface just one mile of road? An overlay that's about 24 inches wide. Uh, two and a half inches thick is going to cost us approximately $120,000. Depends upon how close it is to the plant. 24 feet wide. 24 feet wide is the top. That's the surface of it. Mm -hmm. And then uh, it's a two and a half inches thick. What we do is uh, we, when we look at that road and we check out the, the wheel rutting on it, we'll go in with a half inch layer to, to level up the road to get the proper slope on it and then we'll cover that with the other remaining two inches. So we're filling in the lower spots in order so that, that, that we have a full depth of pavement all the way across. So to recap, if we have 450 miles of just county roads and we have to do on average about 30 miles a year to keep up and it costs just for the overlay $120,000 for each mile, that means just to maintain our surfaces 
we're talking $3.6 million a year. Correct. Is that right? Yep. And I think as most people appreciate, in addition to county roads, we also have a number of bridges in the community. How many, how many bridges is the county responsible for? We are responsible for, in, in, in my job title, we're responsible for all the bridges in Sheboygan County that are on the state, and, and, or not on the state, but on the um, county and local system, which is 152 bridges. 73 of those are owned by the county. The other 79 are owned by the municipalities, the townships, villages, and cities. So there's a lot of road work out there to take care of. And as one of the largest counties with the fifth highest number of roads, people can begin to appreciate why we have some serious financial concerns with how we're going to maintain this transportation system. Last question before I turn it over to Chairman Wagner. If you don't keep up with this, you know, you painted a picture earlier, well, if we do this, you know, 30 miles a year, just the overlay, $120,000 per mile or $3.6 million for the 30 miles a year. If we don't keep up with that, and as you know in Sheboygan County and across the state, because of limited resources, we are falling behind, what happens? The next, the next course that we would take is where you got to pulverize that road. So we bring in a big tiller, if you will, and we till up all the asphalt that's there, and we get into the base, bring it all together, and then we, we fine grade it make a, a fresh new base out of it, and then we'll come with four and a half inches of new asphalt over the top of that. That, that ultimately is going to cost us about $250,000 a mile in order to do that. Now we're, giving, we're starting out with a, a fresh, brand new level of a asphalt of four and a half inches thick, but that's or $250,000 a mile. So $120,000 for one mile of just a new service, two, two and a half inches on that surface. $250,000 for one mile if we have to pulverize and pave, which isn't unusual. Right. And then the third and final step that I know you've shared is that if we have to completely rebuild that same one mile of road because we've just pushed it off, what's that going to cost taxpayers? $1.2 million to reconstruct, fully reconstruct, and that's uh, all new base, all new ditches, all new uh, drainage system, uh, new gravel and new asphalt is $1.2 Thanks for the overview, Greg. You're welcome. Tom. Thank you, Adam. Welcome, Greg. As you know, the Transportation Department in the county is the third largest one following our public safety and health and human services. You've got, I believe, about a $14 million budget. Um, could you give us a little overview on how that's allocated? Sure. We, um, out of our $14 million, we have we've allocated about $7 million of that is allocated towards wages and, and, and um, insurance, that type of stuff, uh, benefits. After that, we have to take out all of our fuels, our uh, utility costs, our building upgrades, um, you name it, the rest of it gets lumped in there, as well as the paving. So there's not that much to go around after you fix 600 pieces of equipment if they all need some work, um, take care of util utility bills, fix your doors, um, and do some of the potholes and patching and snow removal. All that stuff is rolled into the, the whole entire four, uh, $14 million. Our revenue, our revenue then on the other side of that comes from, we get about four and a half million dollars worth of tax levy annually. That includes our equipment purchases. We get $2.5 million in general transportation needs. It's provided by the state. We also incorporate about $1.2 million that comes from the townships, that we, the work we do for them. Another $2 million that comes from the state when we do their work as well. So when we take care of their work for everything that we do on their work, world, whether it's materials, trucking, the labor, um, those costs are all covered by those municipal by those uh, entities, be it the towns or be it the state. Just one thing, if you could just repeat it again, I think that's a really a, a fairly large number. How many pieces of equipment do we have in the? About 600, yeah. ranging from a weed eater to an asphalt. Plant. Right, that's a lot of pieces of equipment. It Obviously, is. they're not all running at the same time because we don't <laughs> have that many people working for the county. Correct. But uh, that's still a lot of pieces of equipment. It is uh, without question. Well, thanks. Um, as you know, the county is considering implementing the half a percent sales tax, and 62 counties have done that already. And we're uh, going to address our transportation needs with this. Um, and could you give a recap about why you think that proposal is important? Well, it's, it opens up another door for some revenue and get some, some work done that we've just all talked about. It, we're, we pave on an average about 18 miles a year. We're falling 12 miles short of our 30 miles. Uh, that means we're deferring 12 miles annually that's getting added on and added on and added on. 
as I indicated earlier, 272 miles. Out of that 272 miles, there's 130 of those miles that need to be pulverized and paved. Those are the ones that cost you $250,000 per mile. There's also some reconstructions in there as well, but there's a, a backlog of work that we need to take care of, and this proposal is going to provide some, some, some help in order to get that done, as well as take us off of the borrowing system so that that can also be in turn put to the taxpayers as far as relief and, and debt service and provide a little bit of, of, of payment for our municipalities who are hurting as well as far as their, their infrastructure and, and transportation needs go. Yeah, beyond, beyond our situation, I've been reading recently how uh, uh, deferring some of these major projects, uh, I think they had one in Verona or whatever on the interstate there that they had estimated the DOT a four-year uh, delay had increased the cost about 65 percent. That seemed rather large, but I know deferring uh, these different things, we don't have those kind of major projects, but deferring the maintenance uh, in the end costs the taxpayers money. Absolutely. That's what drives us to get into the situations where we have to go into a, a complete reconstruction. It's no different than if you look at your home. You're going to make that investment. If you're not going to annually do things to upgrade and protect your base and protect things around it and protect the roof, you're not going to protect the insides. So if we don't protect the rest of our, our road and our base, similar to your home, it's going to cost you more money in the future to make those types of improvements and, and, and maintenance needs to get to do. Thanks. I know one of the other things in the half a percent sales tax proposal is that, which is be unique to Sheboygan County, none of the other 62 out of the 72 who have the tax uh, do this, but we're looking to share some of this uh, with the local municipalities, the cities, towns, and villages. And just wondering if... Um, the condition of local roads and, and bridges are part of the reason why we're doing that. Any thoughts you want to add on that? Absolutely. In, in our department, we, um, we have a contract with 11 out of the 15 townships plus the state of Wisconsin. We have a contract with them as well. So we have our fingers yep. in a lot of our fingers other than county business and a lot of the uh, advice that is given to these townships on what they can do and try to save money and, and, and make their roads last a little bit longer comes from our department. So we heard the other side of things and what their roads look like and the challenges that they're up against. And, and some of the things I've heard uh, while listening to the, from the um, heads of local government is, you know, we can handle our fire situations, we can handle our fire trucks, and we can handle the rest of the stuff that's coming to us. One thing we can handle is the, the amount of transportation needs that we're all faced with right now. And <clears throat> be it a lot or be it a little, every municipality is going to be helped out by this. And, and every little bit counts and helps in this situation. Yeah, I'm guessing in some instances some of those roads are carrying a lot bigger equipment and heavier equipment than they were probably originally designed to carry too in some instances. Absolutely. Some of this stuff was laid out back in the 1860s and, and years ago when they didn't have the uh, materials that they, they currently produce, they just rolled the topsoil in and then they put some pavement over the top of it. That's not going to support a $28,000 28, pound tractor anymore. Back in 1916 when roads were built, tractors weighed 9,000 pounds so it's, it's taking a lot and you know one thing we, we can't we can't forget is that not every manufacturer or farm is on a state highway where it's built to handle the load they still have to get there and they get there from the local road to the county trunk to the state road in order to move those products thanks and uh, could you just talk about a little bit about we're into the summer construction season and the orange barrel season without question uh, some of the projects that you have going on this summer sure this is one of the first in the 10 years that I've been here that we don't have a large earth moving project. However, we do have some other projects. We'll be doing um, a road extension on County Trunk I down in Adel, uh, working with the village and extending it out a little bit further. One of our major paving projects is County Trunk C, starting at State Highway 57 and heading east to Sunset Road. Uh, what we'll be doing there is milling off the asphalt that's there, breaking the concrete that's underneath there because that was old State Highway 23, and pulverizing or uh, robilizing that down to three inches. And then we'll be putting the material back over the top and then paving that. It's about a million dollar project that we'll be working on there. It's about four miles of road. We'll make it a little wider, make it a little safer because there's a, a lots of traffic that, uh, that goes between uh, Falls and, and, and Plymouth. And uh, there's uh, been some shoulder issues that we're trying to resolve with this paving project as well. So we're going to handle some safety concerns at the intersection of M and C, put some curbing radiuses in there, fix the drainage. So it's a larger project for us. So we're going to focus our resources on that. And we have a lot of state work. Uh, some of you may have seen it on um, State Highway 57. We did 22 miles of seal coating right off uh, the beginning of June here. Um, that was a, a state project where we uh, were able to do it for them. It, it turned out to be about a $450,000 project. So we've had a very good year this year, and we got a lot of municipal work to do as well. 
Good, thanks. Adam? Thank you, Tom. Um, let me just set, recap and share a few facts directly with our viewers today, because obviously Greg now is well aware of the proposal as is Chairman Wagner and former Chairman Roger Destrudy, who is a strong advocate of it, our Transportation Committee, many others. Now, the fact is our transportation system is critical for economic development and supporting our quality of life in Sheboygan County. That's a fact. The fact is that over the last decade, costs associated with maintaining our transportation system more than doubled. The fact is that the state has imposed a one-size-fits-all property tax cap on most units of government, and therefore raising property taxes is not an option. Frankly, even if it was an option, most people see the property tax as one of the least desirable taxes they receive because that big old bill shows up right around the holidays. We have to take care of our transportation system. Our parents and grandparents built these roads and bridges, and I think we all have a responsibility to continue that investment and take care of them. Take care of them. It's also a fact that if we don't, if we continue to push this off, kick this can down the road, we are all going to pay far more because that 120,000 turns into 250,000 a mile versus 1.2 million a mile. It is fiscally responsible to take care of our roads today than push this off and let the next generation of people worry about it. So personally, I really commend Chairman Wagner, our county board, Greg, and others who have put this proposal together. It is dedicated toward our transportation system, a dedicated funding source. 62 of 72 counties have already implemented a half percent sales tax. We're not reinventing the wheel. And we're not doing it just because they have. We're doing it because we have a need and it's time. We will reduce our borrowing as a result of doing this, and that will provide direct property tax relief. So there are a number of things going on with this proposal, including, as we discussed a few minutes ago, sharing some of the revenue with other local units of government to help them with their, with their challenges. So big initiative for the county board. We're yes. going to have a vote next month on this. And again, Greg, I want to compliment you and your team and the leadership that you put into this. Thank you. Um, in addition to this proposal to maintain our transportation system, and this is where we'll end, there's also discussion about a new transportation complex and some people have gotten these two a little confused. And the fact is that the county has a five-year capital plan. The county board has a five-year capital plan. We've planned for this new transportation complex now for years. We've purchased the property. And one of the beauties of the proposal is that we're going to be consolidating three facilities into one. We're consolidating three facilities into one. So it's a tremendous investment in new infrastructure, a new building, a new transportation complex to take care of all this equipment that you have to have to run a highway department. But the plan was to bond for that, to borrow for that, as we generally do for major building projects. The half percent sales tax is not to be used for the new facility. And again, we're consolidating three facilities into one. So with that said, with that background, Talk a little bit about why this transportation complex is important and why the county board is pursuing this now. Well, it's an opportunity. We, uh, back in 2014, I believe, we had we'd looked at the facilities at Plymouth and Elkhart Lake, and we looked at what kind of money we'd be needing to invest in the next 10 to 15 years. And the number was starting to grow. We were close to a million bucks or so between the two. And as those uh, conversations had taken off, um, we started to think back to a, a decade ago when the new transportation complex was, was considered as well. And it was in, in the five-year capital plan and we talked about. So we thought, let's take our opportunity and get us all underneath one roof, those three facilities, and consolidate less than our footprint and have less buildings to take care of. So that's what started the conversation. And now today led to having 37 acres at the intersection of J and, thir and, and uh, State Highway 67. Um, we are into design. Um, we, uh, I guess, years ago when, when, when the buildings were constructed back in 1947 and 1983, nobody really knew that we'd be plowing with a quad axle truck that measures 54 feet from front to back with a plow and the, and the sander on it. So our space is getting cramped, our facilities are getting older, and at, at this time it's a, it's a wise time to invest, and it's going to reduce our footprint and put some other valuable properties on the market. 
I know we had an operational review of our transportation department a number of years ago, and I think at that time we had seven highway sheds, and we reduced it by one. Uh, That's correct. Yep. Make, yeah, correct yep. me if I'm wrong. <laughs> I'm doing this from memory. So we've gone from seven to six. And then in this situation now, we would be reducing our footprint e even further. The main headquarters in Sheboygan, the old main department headquarters, would uh, we would be able to return that to the private sector, put it That's back correct. in the tax roll. Yes. The, the um, facility in Plymouth and the facility in Elkhart Lake. So again, consolidating three facilities into one. You just touched on the age of these facilities. And could you walk through us? Through that again, quick. Elkhart Lake is, was built in 1947, the, the first piece of it. Then there was a fire at one point, and they, they came back in 1995 or 93. I'm not exactly sure on the date, and they put up another a standalone uh, metal shed. Uh, Plymouth stands on a, on a almost an eight-acre parcel, and it's built in 1983. Uh, it's got a couple salt sheds with it. And, uh, square footage is about 28,000 square feet. Um, our Manitowoc, our Manitowoc, I'm sorry, Sheboygan facility is on uh, 8.35 acres and it's right near the police station as well as the, the Sheboygan clinic. So very valuable properties. It's located next to an office complex. So I, I think there's a multiple things that could be utilized there. All of these uh, facilities. And built in, what year was that one 1954. Built? 54. 1954. Correct. Yeah. So they're all in, in, in pretty decent condition for the condition they're in and for the ages they are. Um, but very marketable slots. You know, you can see the one in Plymouth from 23, so it's got a, a nice location. And the uh, Elkhart Lake is on State Highway 67, so um, I think it, it, the timing's right. Uh, it would be great to get us all under. They're going to gain some efficiencies by having uh, just the, the, the general communication between my staff instead of having everybody spread out over those three facilities. It'd be our administration, our shop, all the overhead cranes, all of that. It's not just the garage, the house equipment. That's the, that's the place where we're going to be putting everything together and, and fabricating things that we need to have in the field. So I think it will be a, a great opportunity for us to communicate, collaborate, and gain some efficiencies as well. Less travel time for our workforce to come back and forth to the city of Sheboygan, which may have made sense in 1954, but doesn't anymore. Correct. And as you know, and Chairman Wagner knows, we already have a offer to purchase the uh, property in Elkhart, Elkhart Lake, yep. and we have some interest in Plymouth, and I know we'll have interest in our facility in the city of Sheboygan because it's prime for development, whether they continue with the building or add something new. So. Anyway, consolidating from three facilities to one, and uh, there hasn't been a lot of public discussion about it because the press hasn't really covered that, but from a standpoint of being in the plans and discussed by the Transportation Committee and, and board members, it's been in the works for years. Correct. We're, in a, we're pretty far along uh, as far as the, the design goes. We, publicly, we haven't put anything out yet because we really haven't uh, put our support all into one um, site location, but we have reduced the square footage from the day one we started down to today, and, and I think we're probably going to be in that 125,000 square foot range, which is a huge, huge building. Huge building. Um, but I think that we're going to put the nice, the nicer look to it, so it fits the landscape better, and it doesn't just look like a big box out in the middle of the field. And that's our challenge. We've looked at other transportation facilities, and they tend to look very, what's well, precast. It's precast cement and uh, masonry. Yep. Yeah, they. they can't, they don't look real <laughs> pretty, but we want it to at least be sensitive to the neighborhood there, and, and I'm sure there'll be a, a decision made by the county board on what's the right <laughs> answer there. But uh, major investment, how long will a building like this last the community? We're looking at 80 plus years. That's what uh, we should be getting out of it. So mm -hmm. the return on our investment should be there, and it should be a, a, a facility that we can all be proud of, as well as our, our next generations can, can utilize for a long, long time. Well, great overview, Greg. I just have so much respect for you and your staff. Thank you. Not only do you have a tremendous amount of responsibility taking care of our transportation system, but you're doing it with less workforce than ever before. When we had that operation review done a number of years ago, we actually downsized our, our highway department, as well as many other departments through mm -hmm. the course of the last 10 years. At one point, I think you had 117. 117 is what 117 we 117 today? We no, you used place. to have 117 and now you're closer to 90. At 90, yeah. I mean, we're leaner, yet our level of responsibility has gotten greater. And then I also wanted to uh, uh, come back full circle to, Tom, what you said about these escalating costs. You gave right. an example that you read. The other example that I think everyone in our community is aware of 
It was Highway 23. Correct. I mean, this was enumerated decades ago, budgeted some time ago, has been held up due to a lawsuit, and at the, while this has all been going on, people have been injured, people have died, we have key community leaders who have been saying we need to get this done, and I think the cost has gone from what, in the 40 millions to well it's over 100 million over this course of time. Yeah, it's, it's remarkable what's happening yeah. for maintaining or improving our transportation system. It is. It's um, now, unless you have your own wings. <laughs> <laughs> it's getting more costly. It is. It, uh, you know, we've been told, even with the building project, that you know, the longer you put stuff like that off, you're yeah. talking anywhere between three and five percent a year, just in just in material cost only. That's not labor, equipment, and but everything that's associated with getting that structure or that facility built. So yeah, it can add up in a very very fast time to to, to millions of dollars. The more and more delays we get. Yeah. Just one quick thing I'd add, or two quick things. Um, on Highway 23, I used to travel that road a lot from Plymouth to Fond du Lac, and still do a little bit. I just f find it's a dangerous road, unfortunately. I've seen some accidents and certainly read about them and seen some near misses, so I, I eventually will have to wait out. The, the judge will make his ruling, and I'm hoping that will progress. And also, one of the other things I want to point out on the half a percent sales tax is that about 18 cents on the dollar will be paid on people coming outside of our county. Uh, that we don't recoup at this point, and uh, I think there's some value in that to the county taxpayers. We yeah. an excellent point when all these folks are visiting the other 62 counties that have a half percent sales tax. They're helping support yeah. their transportation infrastructure and law enforcement or whatever they may be applying right. it to, and we're not capturing that. Right. So, excellent point, Tom. Plus, we have a lot to be proud of here that people can yes, come and do. see and, and check out. So, that's a lot of Absolutely. Things. Thank you for your leadership. Ten years. Ten years. Hard to believe how quickly the time is gone. We should really go back to ten years ago and see how I looked then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know we both have a few less gray hairs. Yeah. Thank you for your leadership. Thanks. The teamwork that you uh, provide through your department. A lot of good things happening. And thank you for joining us today. A lot of significant challenges going on in county government and at all levels of government, particularly with transportation. And uh, there's some folks out there concerned with all the barrels up and navigating through our community right now. I mean, there is just a lot going on, but a lot of good people in play helping make this community wonderful. So thanks for joining us. If you have any questions, suggestions, don't hesitate to contact any of us or your county board supervisor. Next month, we're going to have Wendy, our finance director here, and she's going to be talking about the budget process. So until then, thanks for joining us.